light heavyweight championship fight between Anderson the Spider Silva and Tito Ortiz. making his way to the octagon and looking to leave as the new UFC light heavyweight champion. He is the number one ranked 205 pound contender and is finally realizing the title fight here tonight. He believes he has a lot of advantages in this fight. He believes he's the better man. Look at the confidence on his face. No UFC jitters for this man. He is out to prove tonight that this champion is a one trick pony and that he is the best light heavyweight on the planet. We'll see if he can turn those words into actions here in short order. joined a long list of Hall of Fame types. Chuck Liddell, John Jones, Daniel Cormier. Now this man is the hunted at 205 pounds. He is the UFC light heavyweight champion. He has defended the belt. He has proven without a shadow of a doubt that he's the best 205er in the world. A lot of momentum with the challenger here tonight, though. A lot of people think we're getting a new champion. The champion is not among those. We'll see if this man can walk out the same way he walked in as the undisputed light heavyweight champion of the world. Let's get you our tail of the tape for this light heavyweight championship fight. Silva is 14 years the elder. He will have a three-inch reach advantage. Now for the official introductions, here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Loving. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, it's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC Light Heavyweight Championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a wrestler holding a professional record of 21 wins, 12 losses, and one draw. He stands six feet two inches tall, weighing in at 205 pounds. Fighting out of Huntington Beach, California, USA, presenting the challenger, Tito. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a Muay Thai kickboxer and jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 34 wins, 11 losses, and one no contest. He stands six feet two inches tall, weighing in at 205 pounds. Fighting out of Curitiba, Brazil, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC light Heavyweight champion of the world, Anderson the Spider Silva! You have seen belt online, protect yourself at all time, obey my command at all time. If you want to touch love, do it now, go back to your corner. They touch him up and we are underway. walk here in Vegas. You absolutely want to fight in Las Vegas. Before it was the MGM Grand, it was the Mandalay Bay. Now it is the T-Mobile Arena, the most beautiful arena 
in the world and the home to the biggest UFC fight right now. From International Fight Week to championship fight all across the board, you come to T-Mobile. Oh, his opponent squirming like a fish out of water now. The ground and pound is on point. This could very well be the beginning of the end. This could be the beginning of the end. We've seen some really good ground and pound fighters. This young man is as good as any we've ever seen. Watch triangle, watch triangle. He's to push the arm to the side, get his head against the mat. Now watch as he goes to the finish. Watch his chest go to the mat. He goes flat. Oh, he might have got him with a choke. Ooh, right into side control, DC. This is where you want to be now because you get to make your opponent decide. They try to turn back into you, you can attack guillotine. If they turn away to try to get to your knees, you throw your hooks in and you got all your rear choke submission. A lot of top pressure being applied here. Oh, really nice work to keep busy off of his back as he lands some more offense here for Bob. Outstanding ground and pound here. Somewhat of a lost art in MMA, at least in terms of making sure that every strike counts. Not an issue for him. He's making every single one of them count. He is not pity pad. He's not touching. Every punch that lands, he wants you to feel it. Under two minutes now to go. Oh, and he's back up again. Those get-ups have been there for him all night. Oh, he might be out. Straight right hand has been a good weapon for him. He misses with it there. All right, so we'll call time now. All right, so a near perfect entry there, and finally he gets his first takedown of the fight, and they say if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, was able to get him down there. Persistence pays, and that's what we saw with this young man. Over and over, he shot for takedown. Looks like maybe he's trying to get an arm underneath the chin. He's side to side, trying to get a bulldog choke. This is the choke that your uncle used to do to you when you were... Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. So the fighter was really caught in a submission there just as the horn sounded. Safe to say he was saved by the bell there. So back to the stools they go. 60 seconds to recover here. We're going to fight on, ladies and gentlemen. Another round coming up. All right, let's now look back at some of the action from that round. He went headhunting, landed, nearly got the finish too. A lot of coaches tell you don't headhunt. In this case, He's been headhunting, and he landed a big enough shot to truly put his opponent on notice. Ready? Ready? All right, let's get to round two. Nice body kick right on the over. Oh, man, how is he standing? Brutal knee to the body. All right, so he's landed some good shots tonight, but this is not a combo meal, right? No three-piece, no soda. It's one and done more often than not. John, don't you come to me without a combo. I want the <laughs> whole platter. Give him the whole platter, young man. Put some punches together. Make this guy take the whole thing. Give him more than one strike. You have now found a set of punch. The jab is landing consistently. Find something that's going to go behind it. Big punch lands over the top. How's he going to follow this one up? Takedown defense holds up. And they separate. Splits the guard, lands the right hand. Single collar tie now. He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Oh, is that a big knee the body? We'll see if he can follow up. Oh, oh. So a much different approach for him here in this second round. He was a little bit tentative in round one, a little bit of oh! What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves to go finish his fight. I mean, he's cutting down the size. Double leg takedown attempt here, and that is a good attempt as he gets the fight back to the middle. It's ideal. His ideal. 
ideal situation just happened. He got into the shot, didn't have to put too much effort to finish. Great job. All right, operating inside the closed guard now. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Beautiful movement, hip work on... Now he has a headlock trying to pin his opponent's back down flat onto the mat. Look from the transition to an arm triangle to try to chase the finish. There he is. He's moving to the finishing position. Now watch he go parallel right next to his opponent. When it's time to finish, he has to... And this might just be a matter of time. Wow. Side control now, and certainly I would think more offensive options for the bottom fighter than in the half guard. Absolutely more offensive options, because now you can just start to get away. You can just go to a wrestler stand-up. Get to your knees, post your hands, don't allow him to get his hooks in, right? Really be aware of the hook. But get to your hands, stand up, fight the hands, break away and escape. But it's so much more free-flowing than the half guard in the side control, because all you need to do is just get the opponent's body up because his legs are just free to move. His legs are not controlling anything. His legs are just free, so you have more freedom to use yours. Position change. Wow, what a transition. Arch, a good ground and pound by him here, certainly staying busy and not just busy, but effective. You can just throw punches to keep the referee off of you. This guy is throwing punches to be effective, to throw damaging strikes. He's doing a fantastic job. Good, solid strike on the ground. Minutes now to go. I mean, how many can he take? Oh, nice job using his strength there to posture up. We'll see what he can do now. He's gonna start looking to land big shots from the top. Uh, it looks like he's got a couple hooks in here, DC, and defensively, you better be careful. Man, isn't it fun to watch this dude work on the mat? It's unbelievable how fluid he is in his motions on the mat. All right, so pretty good damage here with the ground and pound. Nothing superficial about these strikes. They are intending to harm. Oh, yeah, he's landing very accurately, and he's landing to get damage off. 15 seconds to go. I mean, how many can he take? All right, three rounds down, potentially two more to go. We are headed to the championship round. All right, no Telestrator for DC tonight, but we'll get you some replays. And if you like face punching, that was a good round. Yeah, where's my Telestrator, man? I want to draw this action. 
But yeah, John, you're right. It was the striking, it was the punches that really did allow him to take control of this round. So here we go with our fourth round of a possible five, and a lot of fighters change up their training camp when they're fighting five rounds versus three. Yeah, you gotta change it up. You have to mix things up because fighting for an extra 10 minutes is not normal. Got him. Oh! He's got hurt here. Oh! Now he's on top of him looking for the finish. Oh, he might be out. Oh, reversal here. What a way to switch. He jumps on a headlock. We call this in wrestling just a headlock. And if you're not careful, you can get stuck in an arm triangle. Watch triangle, watch triangle. He needs to push the arm to the side. Get his head against the mat. Now watch as he goes to the finish. Watch this. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He got it. He got it, John. Oh, he got it done. Absolutely. He finishes his opponent by way of submission. Well, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. Just watch how slowly he approaches the submission, though. He never rushes. He takes his time, but it's his trickiness. It's his ability to trick people into going to the floor with him that puts them in danger and finishing fights. So there he is, ladies and gentlemen, the man they are all chasing at 205 pounds, the UFC light heavyweight champion, and what a way to get the job done tonight with a submission victory. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Levine's called a stop to this contest at 1 minute, 19 seconds of round number 4. Declaring the winner by tap out due to arm, triangle, choke, and new undisputed UFC light heavyweight champion of the world. ubiquitously regarded as the best contender in this light heavyweight division, and he proved he belonged tonight, submitting the incumbent to become the new UFC light heavyweight champion. Rarified air for this fighter here tonight, and man, is he enjoying it with the corner now. Can't help but feel good for that guy to finally get over the hump and get to the top of the